As we mark exactly 100 episodes on air, we make a plea to you to help those battling leukemia. In September 2000, a Cape Town teenager lost his life to a bone marrow disorder. Chris Collett was only 17 years old when he died of leukemia. His passing made headlines and touched the hearts of South Africans. 14 years on, bone marrow disorders continue to take lives, but not many South Africans realize each and every healthy individual is living with the cure. Leukemia is basically a form of cancer, and it's a cancer of the blood and the bone marrow. And what happens essentially is that your, your bone marrow starts producing abnormal blood cells. Leukemia just happens from a, almost we can say, a genetic reason. Um, there's no specific true cause for it. In a large number of cases, leukemia can be cured with adequate treatment. And that treatment involves chemotherapy, radiation therapy in some instances, and also bone marrow transplants. This is the journey of Tina Water and her son, Chris, with leukemia. I was only 22 when I had my first son, Chris. Um, it was yeah, really exciting, I think, as any mom feels when you're having your first baby. You've got all these great expectations about everything. Chris grew up a healthy little boy. Every milestone, you know, I kept scrapbooks of the first haircut and the first walk. He started his primary school education in Cape Town in 1989. My brother and I were very close. Um, we close as in how a real siblings should be. You know, we used to fight a lot. We would challenge each other all the time. He became an active and artistic teenager who inspired his family with his talent. He was very creative, always drawing photographs. You know, he was a very creative person. Loved the water, loved surfing. One day in 1997, Tina received an urgent call from her son's teachers. The school phoned me to say I must come and fetch him. He wasn't feeling well. And I went and I fetched him, but everything seemed fine. I mean, there was no temperature. There was absolutely nothing that seemed wrong. He was just very tired. But in the next few days, Chris's energy levels started fluctuating and Tina took him back to the doctors. Out of the blue, the Bota family received shattering news. Their son, Chris, had leukemia. So you can imagine the, the shock. Suddenly you told your son has leukemia. It's, it was the furthest thing from my mind. Doctors told Chris he had two weeks left to live unless he found a bone marrow donor. His first thought was death, am I going to die? And uh, I must say that was mine as well. Um, I had a cousin many years ago who passed away from leukemia at the age of about six. And, you know, when I heard this, I thought, well, that's it, Chris is going to die. At the time, there were only about 600 donors countrywide on the South African Bone Marrow Registry. None of them matched Chris. The teenager was running out of time. Not only was Tina dealing with a sick teenager, she also had two other children to look after. Chris's health in the meantime had become extremely fragile. You're constantly fighting germs and infections. You've got to have signs up outside your house not allowing people to come in if they've got a slight cold or a sore throat. 
We couldn't go to any public places, no movies, churches, shopping centres, anywhere where there are a lot of people. Doctors had predicted Chris wouldn't live more than 14 days. But weeks turned to months and the teenager soldiered on. Tina came up with an idea of involving the media with the hope of getting a donor for her son. During this period, she also started compiling her own database of potential bone marrow donors to help not only her son, but other leukemia patients. A year after Chris was diagnosed with leukemia, there was a breakthrough. A match was found. It was a woman from KwaZulu Natal. The bone marrow arrived at 10 o'clock at the airport this morning, and by 20 past 11, he was receiving it, and by quarter past 12, it was all over, and he's fine. Chris's health picked up. He could now lead a normal teenage life. But in the years to follow, he had an unexpected relapse. His vital organs had endured severe trauma because of previous aggressive treatment. And on the 10th of September 2000, Chris lost the battle to leukemia. He passed away in my arms. I was holding him and he just slowly slipped away and the machine stopped and oh, it's a day I'll never forget as long as I live. To hold your child who's now at that stage 17, it was a month before his 18th birthday. He'd been my baby that I'd held in my arms when he was born and here I had to hold him when he died. It's just, it's not something anybody would ever wish on anyone. He fought the disease as much as he could, you know, and, and that, that really, it, it inspired me and it, it, left a, it left a footprint on my heart, you know, and I'll never forget that was his courage and his strength. It was a heartbreaking end to a three-year battle with leukemia. All Chris's friends and family could do was to mourn their loss and find a way to pick up the pieces. After the break, a mother's gift keeps her son's memory alive. <laughs>